Tech Radio here on the Freedom Phalanx Radio Network. Thanks for joining us, and I'm your host, Shane, broadcasting live from the Comedy State of Illinois, as always. And with me are my co-hosts, uh, Jason and Stan. Uh, how are you doing, gentlemen? Uh, enjoy that first segment or that first hour? Oh, yeah, definitely for sure. Um, I think I'm starting to get laryngitis for the <laughs> second hour. <laughs> what, what's the topic again? Um, oh, you know what you know what the topic is. You yeah. know what the topic is. It's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting one. It's gonna be an interesting one. Uh, yeah. That said, uh, it's first worth mentioning again that uh, this discussion is covered under the 395 U.S. 444 1968 Brandenburg v. Ohio decision. As long as there is no incitement or specific targeting, these sorts of topics are covered under free speech, uh, assuming the government follows their own laws. Uh, I suppose we're taking a risk either way, but uh, let's let's do it. So we'll be talking about a series of articles written by Jim Bell in the 1990s on uh, his idea of assassination politics. Uh, There's a a 10-article anthology available at libertyunderattack.com, tinyurl.com forward slash forward slash assassination politics. Again, tinyurl.com forward slash assassination politics. But uh, we'll give you an overview this evening, uh, some of our concerns, and uh, we'll look at the uh, overall viability of this strategy and more. So who the hell is Jim Bell? Well, uh, let's 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 find out. Uh, this is his Wikipedia page. So, uh, James Bell is an American crypto anarchist who created the idea of arranging for anonymously sponsored assassination payments via the internet, which he called assassination politics. Since the publication of the assassination politics essay, Bell was targeted by the federal government of the United States. He was imprisoned on felony charges of tax evasion in '97 and 2001. Wired called Bell one of the most one of the internet's most famous essayists and the world's most notorious crypto convicts. <clears throat> uh, I'll skip this uh, next part. Uh, following investigation by the Internal Revenue Service, Bell was arrested and subsequently jailed for 11 months on felony charges of harassment and using fake social security numbers. Uh, after his 2000 release, Bell publicly announced that he believed that there was extensive federal government corruption associated with his 1997 uh, to 2000 criminal case, and that he was going to research the facts and file lawsuits. He filed a lawsuit in 2003. Bell was put under heavy surveillance and rearrested for harassment, stalking of federal agents. He was charged with intimidation and stalking and was convicted and again imprisoned, this time for a decade-long sentence. Bell protested vociferously against the conduct of the trial, going so far as to file civil lawsuits against two judges, at least two prosecutors, his former probation officers, and his defense attorneys, but ultimately to no avail. He was released on in December 2009, only to be arrested in July 2010 for violating his parole conditions. Bell's parole violation hearing resulted in another sentence, and he was released on March 12th, uh, March 12th, 2012. So, <clears throat> I guess a little more background, just a basic background of of who uh, Bell is. Uh, he was born in Akron, Ohio, and attended the uh, Mass- Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he earned a degree in chemistry. After graduation, he worked for Intel. Uh, he had been a Libertarian Party member, described his political beliefs as anarcho-libertarian. Uh, Bell attended three meetings in the Multnomah County Common Law Courts. Um, let's see, what else is, uh, oh, he owed $30,000 to the federal government. There are a couple interesting, a couple interesting quotes, but first, uh, this guy was a genius. Uh, he's a scientist, an engineer, an inventor, essayist, uh, author, and, uh, political dissident. So, um, he is, uh, very, very intelligent, and his only activity since his release was, uh, his patent application in February 2012, uh, Bell's Isotope Modified Optic, Optical Fiber Patent. Uh, he applied for a patent on an invention which would improve fiber optic communication speeds and assist in transmitting long distances. Although yet to produce any fiber, Bell states his mathematical models show the velocity of light within the fiber can be improved from 68% to 98% of the speed of light with lower optical loss and dispersion, which would allow light pulses to be transmitted for longer distances without being smeared together over time and distance. So, uh, Bell was a very, very interesting guy, but uh, he had a lot of problems with uh, with the fed- with the feds. And I'm sure they really didn't like his idea of assassination politics much. So <clears throat> I'd like to start by uh, playing the spoken discourse of one article from Jim Bell's anthology uh, on assassination politics. Uh, this will lay out his idea, and the subsequent articles reflect on the political implications, uh, some concerns raised by readers, and more. Uh, after I play this, I'll read some selected portions from others, and uh, we'll, we'll pose some questions and, and then just discuss some things. So, Ms. Producer, please queue up clip four. Assassination Politics by Jim Bell. Article 1. I've been following the concepts of digital cash and encryption since I read the article in the August 1992 issue of Scientific American on encrypted signatures. 
Well, I've only followed the digital liberty area for a few weeks. I can already see a number of points that do and should strongly concern the average savvy individual. Number one, how can we translate the freedom afforded by the internet to ordinary life? Two, how can we keep the government from banning encryption, digital cash, and other systems that will improve our freedom? A few months ago, I had a truly and quite literally revolutionary idea, and I jokingly called it assassination politics. I speculated on the question of whether an organization could be set up to legally announce that it would be awarding a cash prize to somebody who correctly predicted the death of one of a list of violators of rights, usually either government employees, office holders, or appointees. It could ask for anonymous contributions from the public, and individuals would be able to send those contributions using digital cash. I also speculated that using modern methods of public key encryption and anonymous digital cash, it would be possible to make such awards in such a way so that nobody knows who is getting awarded the money, only that the award is being given. Even the organization itself would have no information that could help the authorities find the person responsible for the prediction, let alone the one who caused the death. It was not my intention to provide such a tough nut to crack by arguing the general case, claiming that a person who hires a hitman is not guilty of murder under libertarian principles. Obviously, the problem with the general case is that the victim may be totally innocent under libertarian principles, which would make the killing a crime, leading to the question of whether the person offering the money was himself guilty. On the contrary, my speculation assumed that the victim is a government employee, presumably one who is not merely taking a paycheck of stolen tax dollars, but also is guilty of extra violations of rights beyond this. Government agents responsible for the Ruby Ridge incident in Waco come to mind. In receiving such money and in his various acts, he violates the non-aggression principle, NAP, and thus presumably any acts against him are not the initiation of force under libertarian principles. The organization set up to manage such a system could presumably make up a list of people who had seriously violated the NAP, but who would not see justice in our courts due to the fact that their actions were done at the behest of the government. Associated with each name would be a dollar figure, the total amount of money the organization has received as a contribution, which is the amount they would give for correctly predicting the person's death, presumably naming the exact date. Guessers would formulate their guess into a file, encrypt it with the organization's public key, then transmit it to the organization, possibly using methods as untraceable as putting a floppy disk in an envelope and tossing it into a mailbox, but more likely either a cascade of encrypted anonymous remailers or possibly public access internet locations, such as terminals at a local library, etc. In order to prevent such a system from becoming simply a random unpaid lottery in which people can randomly guess a name and date, hoping that lightning would strike, as it occasionally does, it would be necessary to deter such a random guessing by requiring the guessers to include with their guess encrypted and untraceable digital cash in an amount sufficiently high to make random guessing impractical. For example, if the target was, say, 50 years old and had a life expectancy of 30 years, or about 10,000 days, the amount of money required to register a guess must be at least one ten thousandth of the amount of the award. In practice, the amount required should be far higher, perhaps as much as one one thousandth of the amount, since you can't assume that anybody making a guess would feel sufficiently confident of that guess to risk one one thousandth of his potential reward. The digital cash would be placed inside the outer encryption envelope and could be decrypted using the organization's public key. The prediction itself, including name and date, would be itself in another encryption envelope inside the first one, but it would be encrypted using a key that is only known to the predictor himself. In this way, the organization could decrypt the outer envelope and find the digital cache, but they would have no idea what is being predicted in the innermost envelope, either the name or the date. If later the prediction came true, the predictor would presumably send yet another encrypted envelope to the organization containing the decryption key for the previous prediction envelope, plus a public key, despite its name to be used only once, to be used for encryption of digital cash used as a payment for the award. The organization would apply the decryption key to the prediction envelope, discover that it works, then notice that the prediction included was fulfilled on the date stated. The predictor would be, therefore, entitled to the award. Nevertheless, even then, nobody would actually know who he is. It doesn't even know if the predictor had anything to do with the outcome of the prediction. If it received those files in the mail, in physical envelopes which had no return address, it would have burned the envelopes before it studied their contents. The result is that even the active cooperation of the organization could not possibly help anyone, including the police, to locate the predictor. Also included within this prediction fulfilled encryption envelope would be unsigned, not yet valid, digital cash, which would then be blindly signed by the organization's bank and subsequently encrypted using the public key included. 
The public key could also be publicized to allow members of the public to securely send their comments and possibly further grateful remuneration to the predictor securely. The resulting encrypted file could be published openly on the internet, and it could then be decrypted by only one entity, the person who made that original, accurate prediction. The result is that the recipient would be absolutely untraceable. The digital cache is then processed by the recipient by unbinding it, a principle which is explained in far greater detail by the article in the August 1992 issue of Scientific American. The resulting digital cache is all absolutely untraceable to its source. This overall system achieves a number of goals. First, it totally hides the identity of the predictor to the organization, which makes it unnecessary for any potential predictor to trust them not to reveal his name or location. Second, it allows the predictor to make his prediction without revealing the actual contents of that prediction until later, when he chooses to, assuring him that his target cannot possibly get early warning of his intent and failed predictions need never be revealed. In fact, he needs never reveal his prediction unless he wants the award. Third, it allows the predictor to anonymously grant his reward to anyone else he chooses, since he may give this digital cash to anyone without the fear that it will be traced. For the organization, this system also provides a number of advantages. By hiding the identity of the predictor from even it, the organization cannot be forced to reveal it in either civil or criminal court. This should also shield the organization from liability since it will not know the contents of any prediction until after it comes true. Even so, the organization will be deliberately kept poor so that it would be judgment-proof. Since presumably most of the laws the organization might be accused of violating would require that the violator have specific prior knowledge, Keeping itself ignorant of as many facts as possible for as long as possible would presumably make it very difficult to prosecute. Okay, and uh, there you have it. That's the first of ten articles uh, in Jim Bell's Jim Bell's anthology on the subject. So I understand that some of that crypto jargon may not have been explicitly clear. May may not understand it. It, it is it is a lot, and uh, but uh, we will we'll break it down as we go through that. So that's why we're discussing it, so we can de deliver this information to you in as uh, simple as a way as possible without uh, the crypto anarchism. So, uh, so, so I guess just a, a brief explanation of how we how we kind of modeled this idea. So, like let's say uh, Joe Schmo. Um, is a, is a real dick over there. He's a real dick, and he's been uh, murdering it. He's been murdering innocents in the Middle East, and he's been uh, um, vi like uh, just explicit violations of the app on a daily basis, essentially constantly. <clears throat> so, uh, like, like let's say, uh, pretty, everyone pretty much doesn't like this guy, and they think it's be it's best off if he's gone. So what they would do is they'd uh, create a they'd, they'd uh, create a profile for him. People would would donate this uh, digital cash, and. <clears throat> Whenever, uh, whenever, uh, and then whoever made the prediction, uh, the accurate prediction on when the guy were to die, which is probably, it's probably going to be the assassin. So, so the, so the assassin makes the accurate, accurate prediction on when the guy is going to die, and then he receives the cash anonymously uh, through digital cash. Um, is a really, really interesting, interesting subject. But uh, so that's a brief over, overview. It's similar to what we discussed at the very end of the Guerrilla Warfare broadcast. Uh, uh, a a subject known as uh, libertarian jackals, or another proposed theory. Um, it was uh, proposed in 1989 by the British libertarian Nick Roberts in an attempt to lower the opportunity cost of war. <clears throat> uh, libertarian defense would be the use of jackals, or assassins, and their targets are government officials, uh, although only the leadership that makes the decisions about the war. Uh, so ideally, the goal is to prevent war, but if they fail, the goal is to end the war. So it's kind of similar to that, although I think uh, uh, Jim Bell fleshes, that, fleshes it out a little more. So um, before before I move forward, uh, um, what what are your initial thoughts uh, on this strategy? And keep in mind, we're going to we're going to go over some some concerns. So yeah, what, uh, uh, here in a moment. But but what are your what are your initial thoughts? I was shocked uh, when you initially <laughs> brought up this subject. I was like, oh oh shit, here we go. But I found as I was reading through it, the more it wasn't so shocking, the more you could actually start to see exactly what this guy is talking about um and, and then this case he's talking about people that actually work for some government you know possibly overseas or you know wherever you may live um you're probably going to go into some of these concerns but you brought up you just mentioned a case where joe schmo was going overseas and he was actually killing people, you know, clearly in violation of the NAP. Um, 
is there a different market? You know, is there a market for um, people that work for, I don't know, some said government versus whether it's somebody that's just an individual? I can see how there could be a market for actually both of these things. Mm-hmm. So, but what we're good, but I think what we're here to mainly discuss is assassin, assassination politics. Uh, like I said, I was a little shocked by it. I recommend before people really have an idea, um, listen to the show, um, read it for yourself. And it, 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 it paints a little bit, a softer picture, a clearer <laughs> picture of exactly what the, what he's talking about in here. It's still a little brazen. It's still a yeah. little brazen. So, I mean, it's not, it's not the, it's not a perfect theory, but, um, I'm sure we're going to, we're going to. We're going to start to cover this a little more in depth, but just my definitely, initial definitely. reaction, my initial reaction was shocked. <laughs> I, I read it and, you know, um, it, it, it's not it's not nearly as bad as it's made out to be or or what it could sound initially just off the the title of it. So. Oh, 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 yeah. I mean, the, the title itself. Yeah. But uh, but you raised one concern there. Um, and just uh, to reword this in a different way. So there's organiz- orga- Organization A, which is there, um, like, I guess, for the, for the people that are explicitly violating the NAP. Like, these, like, these people need to be stopped, essentially, is, is the mindset of Organization A. <clears throat> so this would be major people. So there would be, uh, and we'll get to one example here momentarily, and you'll see how much was actually being offered for uh, an assassin- assassination market a few years ago. Uh, but w- with with these with these, uh, I guess, uh, high profile people, there would be a lot of individual donators. So the amounts could be like eighty thousand dollars, hundred grand for the assassin, or whatever, however much the amount is. The the reason I don't see much of a concern with Organization B, which would be like like let's say like uh, I don't yeah I don't like uh, Joe Schmo over there. He's not a government agent. But I just think he's a dick. I just, I just personally don't like him. So I'll just, <laughs> I'll put him up on this, on this market, and someone will kill him. But the, it, when it comes to that, only a, one or a few people will donate, and it probably wouldn't be worth the assassin's time to actually go kill that person. Um, so I don't I, see that I, as being a, a huge concern. I don't. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure on that because I'm. Uh, there's, there's crackheads out there that will do, you know, a, a lot of crazy ass shit for maybe a, a 50 rock. So and and then by the time you factor in people who actually have money, let's say they have money to put up a a, a twenty thousand dollar bid, you know, uh, it, it, would there be a market on 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 the hey this guy's I don't like him, uh, let's just put him on this let's just put him on this chopping block here. Yeah, there's there would be a market for that definitely. Well, okay, and, yeah, I, I I agree, but but that already exists today. That like that that already exists today. You could like people have hired hitmen before to to kill unsuspecting people. So that that already exists today. Um, I uh, so I, I guess your your concern is valid, but I just don't think it's going to be as, um, as, as big of an issue as some of his critics that he, he kind of touches on the anthology. I don't think it's going to be as big of a problem as some of his critics uh, as some of his critics see it to be. Um, but uh, but yeah, for for right now, let's let's leave it at that. I want to give Stan a chance to kind of give his his, his initial thoughts. Well, you know, I kind of have my concerns about the workings too, but I see it as kind of agreeing with Shane where there are, you know, these systems out there. They just aren't organized for, you know, assassination politics, as it were, you know. They're mainly, you know, this drug dealer wants a wet hit on this other drug dealer, so that's what happens. It's like, you know... I do I have a feeling the system would get abused by, you know, the people who are already doing this and just using it as more of a tidier method. It's possible, but, you know, I think it's one of those things where it actually might not. And I use might very strongly. It might not, you know. Um but yeah, it's that's speculation. Pretty, yeah, yeah, it's speculation. It's just like when uh, when we talked about the um, uh, what was it, the law and anarchy, or mm-hmm. you know, the third oh, party yeah. arbitration. It, you yeah. know, a lot of it is speculation. Is it a free market application? Oh, most definitely is a free market application. Um, I can think of a perfect example. Oh, not example. Uh, uh, um, uh, 
just a uh, let me let me throw something out there. I'm just going to speculate on this. It's not a real case scenario, but let's say there's this president, definitely not in the United States. It would definitely be over there, probably in one of those hell holes uh, over there in the Middle East. But let's say there's a president, and uh, he sent his own people in to invade a country under of a bunch of, under a bunch of lies, and could possibly be. Um, he possibly could be charged for war crimes that that he blatantly lied so much, and he got these people into a, a never-ending war against terror. You know that I I, I could see the benefit <laughs> to <laughs> I could definitely see the 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 benefit to assassination politics in that situation. But you know here in America, I couldn't see anything like that happening, so we really don't need to discuss that. But you know, in some of those other countries, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and and we'll get we'll get more to the political implications uh, get, getting into this. Uh, but yeah, it's not just restricted to the, to, to the United States. Um, so I think a major question and you're probably pondering, or you might have might not even be pondering it because it just seems like such an out there idea. Well, my friends, uh, there's actually an example of this. Uh, it's actually on screen. I'll post it in chat as well. Um, this this link is. I, I'm not a big fan of the of the Forbes website. Because uh, it's like for some reason this link doesn't always go to the actual article. So if you just if you just Google a uh, um, uh, crowdfunding murder with bitcoins, it'll pull up this article. But uh, yeah, it was uh, written in 2013. I'm not sure if this was on the dark web or, or on the deep web or not. But uh, the title is "Meet the Assassination Market Creator Who's Crowdfunding Murder with Bitcoins." Uh, the image is uh, Ben Shalom Bernanke, and uh, there's about an eighty thousand uh, dollar balance. Uh, for uh, his potential, uh, his potential uh, predictor, I guess we'll say. Um, but uh, yeah, we're we're fine talking about this. This is an article on Forbes, so uh, I'll read a little bit of this article. <clears throat> As Bitcoin becomes an increasingly popular form of digital cash, cryptocurrency is being accepted in exchange for everything from socks to sushi to heroin. If one anarchist has his way, it'll soon be used to buy murder too. Uh, last month, I received an encrypted email from someone calling himself by the pseudonym. Kua Patake Sanjuro, who pointed me towards his recent creation, the website Assassin, Assassination Market, a crowdfunding service that lets anyone anonymously contribute bitcoins towards a bounty on the head for any government official, a kind of Kickstarter for political assassinations. According to Assassination Market's rules, if someone on the hit list is killed, and yes, Sanjuro hopes that many targets will be, any hitman can, who can prove he or she was responsible receives the collected funds. Uh, for now, the site's rewards are small but not insignificant. In the four months that Assassination Market has been online, six targets have been submitted by users and bounties have been collected, ranging from 10 bitcoins for the murder of NSA Director Keith Alexander and 40 bitcoins for the assassination of President Barack Obama to 124.14 uh, bitcoins, the largest current bounty on the site targeting uh, ben Bernanke, chairman of the Federal Reserve, and public enemy number one for many of Bitcoin's anti-banking system users. But isn't that interesting, though? Um, I mean, obviously, that this makes perfect sense when you're talking about crypto crypto anarchists who uh, um, who like who like who like Bitcoin or trying to uh, end the Federal Reserve. I mean, yeah, he's he's even above uh, Obama, or he was a few years ago. But uh, yeah, this existed. I I I I don't obviously it hasn't happened, but uh, the the concept has. Uh, came into fruition, at least uh, um, maybe for attention or, or whatever it is. But yeah, it hasn't actually worked yet as far as I know. So uh, yeah, there's an example for you. There's an example. But uh, <clears throat> I think the next important thing to discuss here is, uh, is, 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 Jim, is Jim Bell's idea bulletproof. And uh, that'll probably take a little more time. So I guess, uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts on uh, the assassination market a few years back? <laughs> Uh, Jason or Stan? Anybody? Anybody? Hello? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Ben Bernanke. Ben Bernanke. Uh, it'd be a, it's pretty much a waste of money right now. But uh, true, because because Janet Yellen's the new uh, Fed director. So yeah, that was that's a little bit outdated here. Yeah, it's 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 kind of they kind of missed the the train on that one. But um, like I said, like I said in my previous example. You know, there could be some situations where this could prove to be a great thing, um, hypothetically speaking. Um, there's also some some scenarios where, um, okay, think of like uh, the whole Jared subway deal. Mm -hmm. You know, a guy like that, and I'm not talking about him, and you know, specifically, but 
think about like some of these pedophiles who kind of get away with essentially rape or a rapist and you know they go through the system only to spend you know their six months in jail which jared is spending you know uh 15 years or whatever which you know it might be enough to some might not be enough to others but think about the justice that could be served justice think about you know just certain <laughs> situations like that where these people are going through the system they're getting the slap on the wrist you know, it, it kind of gets into it about carjacking, where mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like a, a insurance policy. But, um, you know, and people give to the fund, and, you know, it could possibly build, where uh, people are going to think twice about jacking a car because there are people donating a fund <laughs> to essentially ca catch a carjacker and, you know, make them pay. So people could think twice for that, for sure. So, I mean, there, there's, there's pros and cons, definitely. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. But it uh, looks like we're up against this uh, final break for this evening. Um, are we, uh, Mr. Producer? I don't, I don't hear the music. But, uh, but uh, yeah, okay, we are. Uh, when we come back, we'll get into the, uh, the political implications of assassination politics. Is it just restricted to the United States? Uh, or could this be applied uh, everywhere? Uh, we'll also get into, uh, um, I guess we'll, we'll ask the question, is Jim Bell's idea bulletproof? And uh, we will, uh, I guess, look at a, a, few, poss a, a few possible uh, errors uh, in, in this theory uh, that he proposed. So stay tuned. You definitely don't want to miss this, uh, this final segment of Liberty Under Attack Radio. We'll be right back. Hello, America. Do you believe in liberty? Well, fuck you! Why is it that every time I turn on internet radio, I can't seem to find one educated person with libertarian point of views? That's why I choose FPR and radio! For liberty, goddammit! Welcome back to Liberty Under Attack Radio here on the Freedom Phalanx Radio Network. I'm your host, Shane, and with me are my co-hosts, uh, Stan and Jason. Uh, are you guys uh, hanging in there? Yep, no one's kicked down my door yet. Yeah, That's I good. got I got two guys at the door. Um, I told them to wait till the show's over, <laughs> and I, I would definitely give an interview. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, yeah. Uh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think we're still we're we're still fine in regards to Brandenburg v. Ohio. Again, as long as there's no incitement or specific targeting, we're good to go. Free speech. So uh, I think we're we're doing okay at that now. So uh, let's get into uh, is Jim is Jim Bell's idea bulletproof? Um, I noticed that um, his one of his arguments was since nobody since no one will actually know who the predictor is uh that there can actually there can be no conspiracy charges uh, placed upon uh, any individuals in the organization that's that's uh handling the uh, donations and the payments but he's making a really uh i guess say uh, really uh really uh <laughs> he's overlooking something here uh he's assuming the government follows their own laws and therefore conspiracy charges won't be filed uh simply because the donators and predictors don't know each other um, now, I, I'm sure there are charges that, that could be filed, uh, regardless of the answer provided by Bell. I mean, one example, uh, the Citizens for Constitutional Freedom up in Oregon during the state's turf war, uh, the state slapped them with something kind of obscure in my opinion, uh, namely a conspiracy to impede or injure officers. So I think the conspiracy charges have been uh, probably expanded, uh, probably uh, more laws on that uh, since that time. So I'm pretty sure uh, uh, conspiracy charges could actually be, could be uh, – could be could be applied to, to these organizations, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I guess he read also the, the black law. He read the black law. There's no way, dude. He's got you covered. Just listen <laughs> to him, man. <laughs> Just listen to the guy that, that has spent a lot of time in prison. That there's there's no way. I mean, exactly. Yeah, and he he didn't even have the orga <laughs> organization set up, and he was in jail for like twenty, like probably upwards of like fifteen years. So, I mean, wow. yeah, I'm I'm not very. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not just going to take it at face value, but uh, I guess there, there is this too, though. If, if if this organization is set up and it becomes popular, 
uh, it's going to be hard for the state to enforce that because just imagine <clears throat> any politician that advocates for this to be taken down. Um, that that obviously has violated the NAP consistently, which most of them do. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they'd become a target. <laughs> so it'd be really hard for them to, uh, to 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 stop this once it once it actually exists. But uh, I, I guess there, there's there's also one other thing that came to mind. This is more more of a, an obscure uh, concern, but uh, Sabelle proposes that whoever predicts the date of the individual's death, uh, they would get the reward. Now, what if there are multiple correct guesses? Uh, I don't think he addresses this in the anthology, and I would posit that it would it would just be divided among the correct guessers. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but uh, but yeah, I guess uh, you guys want to raise some of your concerns now. That's you, that's you yeah. haven't already, of course. Uh, yeah. Well, um, in the case of the CIA, I guess they could get double paid on assassinations, couldn't they? Essentially, if it's you know, <laughs> if they're already on the if they're already on the target, then you know this would play into their you know to their hands because uh, they can assassinate these people anyway. And uh, also collect a little extra bonus on the side. You know, when we talk about uh, certain dictators, like I know he brings up uh, Hitler, for example. You know, what one thing that I found crazy was he was talking about the end of possible militaries. And he mentions, you know, like in the case of Hitler. Well, let's say you're, uh, let's say you're actually like uh, working with Hitler or whatever and you know the bounty reaches a few million dollars there might be some incentive there you know and could it have stopped you know some type of military action there's a possibility but his claim that we could actually get rid of military uh, I, 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 I can see where there would be groups that are set up to um, run to do these type of operations, whether they have the whether they put up the capital to have like certain types of you know tanks, uh, airplanes, stuff like that, you know, and that that could essentially be their job. And I see how it kind of ties into uh, privatized policing. You know, uh, some of these police organizations that are that that would be private privatized. They they do have um, capital. They do have money that they invest into certain things where I could see there would be like uh, a privatized military, ne not necessarily centralized, but different groups out there that that are specialized in handling, you know, depending on the money that's put up, handling these certain types of situations. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's true. But yeah, it would be it would be private. I'm pretty sure what what you're kind of explaining is private security. But yeah, that that's that, that's a, that, that's a good point. So I, I think there's also um, there's also a couple of other questions that need to be addressed. Um, so is the digital ta digital cash you discussed like here? Do we have that? Um, some would say yes with Bitcoin, but I uh, wrote an article on Bitcoin a while back. Uh, it's really hard to buy without a bank account. So you can't really, it's, it's really hard to buy uh, Bitcoin anonymously unless you do it peer-to-peer uh, -peer in person. Uh, there's also the fact that it's not, uh, it's not anonymous. I mean, uh, you can go look at my Bitcoin, my Bitcoin wallet. So uh, you can look at all the transactions uh, incoming, in, incoming and outgoing. But uh, so yeah, I, I don't think uh, I don't think the cryptocurrency is there yet uh, for this to be a, for this to be viable. I mean, look what happened to Silk Road. Um, so. <clears throat> And plus, the yeah, the, the government is the largest holder of Bitcoin, uh, so that, that that's that's also a concern too. That and also the uh, uh, the mainstreaming of it and uh, the uh, Bitcoin Foundation, I think it is lobbying uh, for uh, like lobbying uh, with the the uh, I guess the the financial uh, industries, so um, or the regulatory agencies rather. So that's a concern. Uh, then the other one is the encryption there. I think so. I, like with PGP, a pretty good privacy for email. I think it's there. Um, I, I, th I think that's viable, but uh, all the all the pieces have to come together in order for for this to for this to be, I guess, ideal. Uh, so I, I don't think I don't think we're there yet. I, I, I really don't. And I'd be interested to see if that uh, that example of the guy a few years back, if he was ever uh, caught and uh, and arrested. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, guys, any thoughts on that? Yeah, K Kyle did bring up his concerns about uh, encryption, and he. Well, I, I don't want to speak on his behalf, but he said he had some concerns about um, whether it, it works or not. I mean, do we really know? And 
and definitely no bitcoin is not the cryptocurrency that we are looking for for total anonym, an, anonymity <laughs> hard one to say i've been drinking since too so um cutting <laughs> some slack uh, good. but yeah i don't i don't think i don't think bitcoin is that currency i don't think we and as far as the encryption goes i, I i'm not totally convinced that we do have um, pretty good encryption. Yeah, I, I, and, I, and I see, I see that. Yeah, it's it's mainly from a lack of security audits, and yeah, I, I do agree with Kyle on that. Um, but the encryption is definitely closer than uh, Bitcoin, in my opinion. But that that is, I mean, that's why it's called the crypto wars. I mean, the technology is going to improve, and better programs are going to come out, and hopefully. Uh, tools that we can use to uh, further regain our freedom. But uh, for the sake of time, I want to move forward to this next one because I, I think this is really, uh, uh, I think this is really important. So, uh, what are the political implications of assassination markets? So this this is an excerpt from part nine of his article. Quote. I was left with the same fundamental problem that's plagued the libertarian analysis of forming a country in a world dominated by non-libertarian states. It was not clear how much how much how such a country could defend itself from aggression if it could not force its citizens to fight. Only then did I realize that if this system could work within a single country, it could also work worldwide, eliminating threats from outside the country as well as corrupt politicians within. And shortly thereafter, I realized that not only could this occur, such a spread was absolutely inevitable by the very nature of modern communications across the internet or older technologies such as the telephone, fax, or even letters written on paper. In short, no, no war need ever occur again because no dispute uh, – no dispute would country he intended uh, – yeah, there's the grammar on this kind of messed up in some areas because no dispute would country he intended to war with, obviously. But he would also draw the ire of citizens within his own country who didn't either want to pay the taxes to support a wasteful, wasteful war or lose their sons and daughters in pointless battles or for that matter were simply opposed to participating in the aggression. Together, all these implications, all, all these potentially affected peoples would unite, albeit quite anonymously, even far, even from each other, and destroy the tyrant before he had the opportunity to make the war. End quote. And that kind of coincides with libertarian jackals. I want to read one more thing, uh, and this is from part two. Uh, quote. Imagine for a moment that as ordinary citizens were watching the evening news, they see an act by a government employee or office holder that they feel violates their rights, abuses the public's trust, or misuses the powers that they feel should be limited. A person whose actions are so abusive or improper that the citizenry shouldn't have to tolerate it. What if they could go to their computers, type in the miscreant's name, and select a dollar amount? The amount they themselves would be willing to pay to anyone who predicts that, who predicts that office holder's death. That donation would be sent encrypted and anonymously to a central registry organization and be totaled with the total amount available within seconds to any interested individual. If only 0.1% of the population, or one person in a thousand, was willing to pay $1 to see some government slimeball dead, that would be in effect a $250,000 bounty on his head. Further, imagine that anyone considering the collecting the bount that bounty could do so with a mathematical, mathematical certainty that he could not be identified and collect reward, the reward without meeting or even talking to anybody who could later identify him. Perfect anonymity, perfect secrecy, and perfect security. And that, combined with the ease of security which, with, with which these contributions should be collected, would make being an abusive government employee an extremely risky proposition. Chances are good that nobody above the level of country com county commissioner would even risk staying in office. Just how would this change politics in America? It would take far less time to answer what would remain the same. No longer would we, would, we, would we be electing people who will turn around and tax us to death, regulate us to death, or for that matter, send hired thugs to kill us when we oppose their wishes. No military? One of the attractive political implications of such a system would be that we might not even need a military to protect the country. Any threatening or abusive foreign leader would be subject to the same contribution assassination reward system, and it would operate just as effectively over borders as it does domestically. So uh, those are the excerpts uh, from for part two. Uh, but uh, what, what do you guys think? Do you, do you think what he's saying is, is, is valid here? Yeah, I, th I can see some val validity to that. Oh, but um, I don't know. I still kind of have my questions on, you know, how the system is completely in it. You know, the kind of the math behind the anonymity, which is only provable really through 
in my opinion, you know, some form of testing. It might not be, you know, putting it straight into action, but, you know, doing some sort of actions that, you know, the government would look into to make sure it is completely, you know, anonymous, as it were. But, yeah. you know, on paper, it looks good, though. Yeah, def but, definitely. And, and uh, something yeah. just came to mind, the free market and assassinations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. great. That's great. But, uh, but yeah, very, yeah, uh, very good. Very good. Um, there are at least two more things I want to get through. Um, and I think these are two important, important questions to address. And if we have time, I'll, I might touch on something else. But um, what I wanted to do for the, for, I guess, for the only things really remaining are uh, read some some highlighted portions from the anthology, um, but I can leave you to do, to do that on your own time. I definitely recommend it. Tinyurl.com forward slash forward slash assassination politics. Again, tinyurl.com forward slash assassination politics. So I think this first one, and, I, and this has kind of already been addressed, but I, I do have a couple points I want to mention in regards to it. Uh, is this a potential strategy to rapidly reduce the size of government? You know, it's it's. It's similar to what Cantwell discussed a few years back, uh, and it's kind of relevant too. But uh, w w but uh, just just bear with me here. So, uh, if random individuals started shooting cops in normal traffic stops, and it got so bad, some of the officers officers probably quit their jobs because the risk was too high. Analogously, if politicians started dropping like flies, they would have to straighten up real quick, and uh, I would say some would probably resign too, which would certainly reduce the size of government. So uh, I think the I think the the best answer for this is an, an affirmative. Yes, I, I think it would rapidly reduce the size of government, not only here but uh, but throughout the world as well. But uh, I want to get your guys' thoughts, uh, Jason. Hypothetically, here. Um... <laughs> <laughs> of, co of course, hypothetically, yeah. I mean, we're talking something. Yes, yeah, this entire conversation is hypothetical, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Th this whole this whole entire conversation is hypothetical. Uh, yeah, would it put would it put their uh, ass to the fire for sure? Would people really think twice about their actions? Uh, you would hope uh, there would be a lot riding on it. That's for sure. But. Um, Anybody who takes a job working for uh, so-called government is already violating the NAP. So just by holding – and th there's a lot of debates about this, but I, 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 do, think it, I do think it violates the NAP. But um, yeah, I, I, so I couldn't see government as being possible. You know, um, yeah, that, yeah, that's how I feel about it. There, it it would hold. There's some. There's a little more accountability there, uh, per se. You know, hypothetically yeah. speaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's there. There's enforcement for the enforcers. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, what, what you what you kind of brought up uh, ties in really well with with the, this next uh, this next question. And uh, um, so, uh, with the recent shooting shooting in Dallas of, of the police officers, the subject of indiscriminate targeting has come up, which has been deemed to be a form of collectivism. Uh, for example, just because X cop in Minnesota killed an innocent does not mean a cop in Dallas should die. Uh, Bell's premise lies upon the fact that these politicians have committed so many atrocity, atrocities that even if they have had no provable direct influence on your life, their death is moral and just. Not only that, but you and many others would simply be donating, and if they were killed, the predictor, the assassin, would get the money. So, so here's the question. Um, personally, I, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll get your thoughts first. This is a really, this is a really, a really, really tough question, but I think it's important to address. I'm sure this could take up an entire two-hour broadcast. We'll have to be kind of short with this, but this has been highly debated, highly debated on various uh, fascist and fascist book groups uh, for of anarchists and libertarians. So, wow. So here's the question. Um, so do police officers equate to politicians? If so, why? And if no, why not? Uh, Stan, you want to go first, buddy? <laughs> All you, man. Uh, yeah, yes. I, I can go. I can go first. I'll, I'll, I'll go. I, hey, it, it's not. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Let's just. Let's just. We're all adults here. I don't I condone. With us, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I don't condone uh, random acts of killing, and I'm. About ninety nine percent or a hundred percent sure that assassination politics doesn't condone 
senseless killing. I've read, I've read, I've read the 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 series, and the goal isn't behind you know just random targeting people. But when you put it in the case, like how some people might see it, okay, um, uh, Castile, Castile shot up Minnesota. You know he died. Uh, a couple days later, the next day, um, cop shot in Texas. Uh, related, not necessarily, not necessarily, but, oh gosh, Shane, why, why are you putting me on the spot like this? Um, the only thing I can say to just kind of save face is you take a job with, with that inherent risk. Don't be surprised when something like that happens. Uh, you, you mess with the bull, you get the horns necessarily. Um, yeah. yeah. Am I condoning what happened? No, I'm not condoning what happened. Do I understand, uh, possibly why it could have happened? Oh gosh. I mean, I mean, right now I'm thinking about just littering my whole, uh, Facebook page with, uh, atrocities being committed on a daily basis by some of these thugs. So don't be surprised to see the reaction from the people in certain situations like today or Dallas. Yeah. Don't act shocked about it is what I'm saying, because you mess with the bull, you get the horns, you put yourself in those situations. Shit like that's going to happen. I mean, yep, and if I, if I could step in, because I, I, I thought of something else here. So um, we've, we talked about argumentation ethics a lot and that anthology is on the uh, Liberty and Tech website. Uh, if you just click on the anthologies tab, you can, you can find all of them there. But uh, there, there's a concept that Stephen Casilla incorporated into argumentation ethics and it's called dialogical estoppel. So how this works is, um, so like, let's say there's, uh, let's say there's, there's a murderer and he, yeah, he, he killed somebody, he violated property rights. Therefore, he cannot object to the punishment because, I mean, he, if, if he claims that he has property rights, he's a hypocrite because he's already proven that he doesn't believe in property rights. And uh, so, so that's, that's the, the concept of dialogical estoppel. Um, you can't, you, you can't uh, reject, you can't uh, reject the punishment, so to speak. Excellent point. So, Excellent point. so, so yes. what, I, what I'm seeing here with the, and, and, and see the police officer, I don't really want to, like, I, I, I don't really want to get into that all so much because this is focused on politicians. I don't think he mentions um, just the the day-to-day bludgies um, like this, but like let's let's think of these really high-profile um, criminals and governments. I mean, they're all criminals in my opinion, but like just like the really high-profile ones that have committed so many atrocities, murdered so many innocents. L- let's just look at that for right now. They have definitely been dialogical. They they cannot claim to um, to have property rights and reject this punishment. I think they're far beyond that point. At the, they're far beyond that point. So I, I think the concept of dialogical estoppel um, really, really does apply here. Uh, and if you want more information on that, please check out the Argumentation Ethics Anthology, a fantastic intellectual intellectual read. But uh, so, yeah, I don't necessarily, <clears throat> I, I, think it's, I think it's different. I really, really think it's different. Uh, most, po- like uh, I would say, most police officers never kills. Like I, I, I don't know that maybe, maybe they, they might kill a few in self defense or something like that. Okay, um, but it's not, it's nothing to the degree of what politicians do on a on a daily basis. Um, especially their paycheck being paid for by taxation, um, which is just the most mild of of their offenses. So, um, <clears throat> hopefully, I've fleshed that out. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with, I'm with Bell on this one. Like especially in regards to these high profile politicians, I think there, there's no that there's no way that they can claim that uh, um, them being assassinated um, is immoral or unjust. There's just no way in hell. But uh, Stan, I'll turn it over to you. What do you think, man? I mean, yeah, I kind of agree with that. You know, it can't just be some random person. You know, there has to be a pretty good reason to because you know if there isn't a good reason in my opinion it's a violation of the nap mainly because the guy probably didn't deserve it if there isn't a good enough reason i mean does a petty thief deserve to get shot over it depends on the situation but if he's you know stealing a you know a banana off of a fruit stand i mean and, and, and that, that 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 arises that arises proportionality too, which which uh, Consilla does get into proportionality of punishment. Yeah. So yeah, you make you make a good point there, and that's that's why I don't see this as being indiscriminate because it's it's mm-hmm. it's it's thought out beforehand. Their their crimes are public knowledge, 
Um, it's not just, it's, it's, it, I don't think this can be considered indiscriminate. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really don't see it, but go ahead, Stan, I apologize. Yeah. And that's my really my only concern is, you know, making sure the guy deserved it. But, you know, as you kind of address, that's kind of covered because the crimes are uh, made available. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, obviously, the, the I guess, like, like let's say, um, I don't know, uh, hypothetically, this, this goes into, like, this comes into fruition. I don't think, like, most people would, like, immediately go for, like, a low-end politician or something like that. I mean, there, there are people, like, there are a lot more high-profile people. And I don't think, like, e even the ones that may, may, it may be questionable what they've advocated for and what they've signed off on. But at least for the high profile ones, I think those would be the first targets anyways. So I, I don't I don't see that as uh, I, I don't think it would I don't think there'd be an issue in in determining, I guess, uh, determining, I guess, the morality and uh, um, the ethics of, of the situation. Mm hmm. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're about up at the end of the broadcast. There's there's more I wanted to get into. Uh, um, Bill discusses a little bit. Uh, he incorporates private arbitration and uh, dispute resolution organizations in assisting assassination politics. Um, I definitely recommend that. That is in part five. Uh, I was going to read part eight as well. It's a column by Paul Maxwell published uh, in the 1996 issue of Asashi Evening News. Uh, in that one, I was just going to read for more clarification on on what actually Jim Bell was proposing. But uh, um, I'd recommend, I mean, if any of I'd, I'd recommend them all, but at least part eight, if, if you're still kind of confused about the mechanics of, of how this thing would, would, would work, uh, that article lays out in a really simplistic manner. Uh, let me see if there's anything else that I was going to mention here uh, that I can kind of touch upon in passing while we're up here at the end of the broadcast. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm, I'm, I think that sits. I think that. Oh, actually, no. Uh, part ten. Uh, part ten. Um, so Bell discusses making the organization itself public. Um, so the predictors and donors would remain private, um, but the organization itself would remain public. And his his thinking is that someone had to be the first to take the axe to the Berlin Wall. Someone had to take that risk for for freedom. Um, and he was, I guess, he was kind of like uh, he was kind of suggesting that. Uh, uh, there needs to be like some, someone's got to step up and just come out in public and do this. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I'd recommend reading part 10 because he flushes that out a lot more. Uh, we just don't have time for it tonight. But I'll turn it over to you guys for, for your closing thoughts on uh, um, on our on the first uh, discussion on Black Lives Matter or uh, or uh, uh, this segment uh, with uh, assassination politics. So what are you guys what are your guys' closing thoughts? Black, Black Lives Matter is a hate group no different than the KKK. <laughs> Um, the, the last question you asked when I kind of danced around it, uh, yes, Shane, yes, I do think they are a part of that list. Um, I really enjoyed this article, like I said, at the beginning of the broadcast, it's kind of a shocker, a shell shock to, to, you know, assassination politics, like, oh shit, what are they, what are we talking about here? You read it, you kind of get an understanding about how the free market works. Is it feasible? Only, only, it's only speculation, but so, I mean, yeah, definitely check out the article. Very good. Very good. And, uh, Stan, uh, your, your real brief, uh, closing thoughts before I take us out. Um, yeah, I agree. You know, Black Lives Matter is clearly a hate group. Um, I know they like to say they aren't and all that bullshit, but you know, that's obviously not the case. And, you know, yeah, assassination politics is really a shell shocker of a topic. <laughs> but you know, we we're not just bringing this up for a shock value. I mean, we're bringing this up for a reason, and uh, that's because you know it has validity to it. You know, um, I'm not going to go into any specific applications yep, because yep, don't do that <laughs> reasons, but. You know, it's it's one of those things where it should be talked about. It's an interesting topic. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it, it definitely is. And and one thing I, I think the libertarian anarchist community needs to do more is discuss use of force issues. I mean, they already do with peaceful parenting, which I think is important. But I think it needs to be extrapolated out to things that we've discussed, like guerrilla warfare and just war theory, and even assassination politics. I'd love to see a massive discussion open up on the subject.